Today we're going to be talking about the power of subconscious mind. I'm going to give you affirmation examples, gratitude journal template, and a law of attraction PDF download. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Amanda Vandergulik from CleverDoughKids.com and if you are a parent who wants to raise a money smart family or you'd just like to know how to work less and earn more, then make sure you click subscribe and hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know the minute my next video is uploaded to help empower you to do just that. I am so excited to share with you the power of the subconscious mind and how it's going to help you achieve your goals when you know how to use it in a way that's going to work best for you. This is week two of our setting goals and achieving them challenge and congratulations for being here, coming back and if this is your first time then welcome. Today I'm going to be sharing the power of our words, how to use our subconscious mind to propel our goals forward and actually attract the things we need in order to make those goals come true. So if you're ready and you're excited, then give me a like and let me know in the comments below what your biggest goal is for this year that you intend to achieve. Before we begin, a very quick recap of what we accomplished in last week's video. In last week's video, we wrote down all of the goals that we wanted to achieve this year. What did you want to be? What did you want to do? And what did you want to have this year? And then I explained how to use my golometer to actually measure your goals so that you could figure out which goal you wanted to go after first that would make sure that you achieved it and therefore kept you motivated to achieve the rest of your goals. If you missed that video, then just click pause, head on over here and watch that and then come back and we'll continue. Before we continue, make sure that you have already downloaded the Goal Setting for Family workbook that I give you. The link is in the description below because that's going to help us as we walk through these lessons. Alright, now that you have watched the first video in the challenge and you have downloaded the Goal Setting for Families workbook and filled out all of your goals, brain dumped them and figured out exactly which goals to go after first, now we're going to talk about the power of our subconscious mind and how to make that work in your favor. There are a couple of very important things I need to share with you and if you get these wrong then you will always be pushing your goals away and that is not what we want. We want to attract them to ourselves. Okay, so first of all, what is the power of our subconscious mind? How does that actually work? What is that? Well, have you ever heard of something called your third eye? Now usually this comes up in the reference when it comes to spirituality, meditations, zenness. The third eye, the principle, is that it is the inner vision that focuses us. Scientifically, we actually have a third eye. No, it's not an eye, but it does involve what we perceive, what we focus on, therefore our vision. It's in the prefrontal cortex of our brain and it works like a filter keeping any irrelevant thoughts, memories, and perceptions from interfering with the task at hand. It is also often referred to as sensory gating, which is the neurological process of filtering out unnecessary and redundant stimuli, which prevents an overload in our brains. If we're overloaded, we can't concentrate, we can't focus, and we are scattered. A quick example of this, if you were in traffic and you were aware of everything around you. You would not be able to focus on just driving. Your brain filters out everything that you don't need and focuses on the road, the cars, any movement that will come across the pathway that you're driving on, but anything else that is irrelevant to us, maybe the name on a building or a, a bird flying overhead, yes it might just catch our attention briefly, but our brain focuses fully on what we need to accomplish and only allows little pieces of the extra in, and that is to keep us safe. Filtering is how we survive. The problem is our brains have figured out what to filter based on our previous experiences. We often have very negative focuses set in or mental blocks in our brain that make us actually look for the things we don't want. 
So if you're asking, okay, does that mean that the brain is filtering out a wider awareness? Yes, that is exactly what it is doing. It is one of the brain's most important functions. It's an adaptive strategy so that only the relevant information that will help us get to our goals is what we are paying attention to, focusing on. But we can actually take control of this through subconscious mind exercises so that we can help our brains focus on what we actually want and ignore the things that are not going to help us get there. How often have you said to yourself, I'm not good enough for that. I don't deserve this. Who am I? I'm not smart enough. All of these things are blocks that we have in our brains and if we can overcome those, then we can actually achieve our goals. We are actually our own biggest stoppers to our own goals. Everybody else, everything else is an exterior that we can shut off, focus in on what's going to help us and achieve our goals. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the word want. If you want something, you actually don't have it, right? I want to be rich. I want to go on vacation. I want a great relationship. Why are we saying this? We're saying this because we don't currently have the money. We don't currently have the vacation. We don't currently have that great relationship. So we want what we don't have. We don't generally want something we already have. Am I right? Give me a thumbs up if you think I'm right. Okay, but what does that do then? So we do want to have the more money. We do want to have a better relationship and we do want to go on dream vacations or, or buy expensive toys and so on. We want those and yet if we want them, we don't have them and we are telling our brains we don't have something. So we don't want to be saying, I want this thing because then we're telling our brains we don't have it, it's not in our reality, we're going to continue not having it. We want to trick our brains into thinking we actually already have what we want. It's really cool. When we trick our brains into thinking that we actually have what we want, our brains will start to use that focus mechanism and filter out anything that's in the way of getting what you want and really focus in on every opportunity to help you get that thing that you want. The reason is your brain is like, oh, I have this thing and then it looks around I'm sure I have this thing. It's got to be here somewhere. Huh. Well, if I can't find it, I better go find it. So that's what your brain does. Your brain is like, wow, I don't have this thing. I better go find it. And it will then go everywhere it can to find the things that will help bring it to you. It's really cool and it really works. All right, let me give you a personal example. When I was 12 years old, my best friend in the whole world disappeared. I remember it so well. We were in gym class and we were playing a game, I think it's called dodgeball, and in order to not be put out of the game, you had to catch the ball and not be hit by it. If you were hit by it, you had to go off, and if you caught it, you had to stay in. So anyway, we're playing this game in gym class and the ball is coming towards me and at the same moment, the door opens and the secretary comes into the gym and says, Cindy, not the same Cindy I married, by the way. Cindy, your mom is here. Grab your things. Your mom's waiting for you. Now, Cindy had no idea her mom was coming, so of course it was not expected. I didn't think anything of it because, well, why would I? Besides, there was a ball coming towards me. So my mind was like, I want to say goodbye to my best friend. But I'll see her tomorrow, I have to catch this ball or I'm going to get hit. Not just to get out of the game, but I really don't like getting hit, it hurts. So anyway, that's what I did, I caught the ball, I saw the door swing closed and she was gone. Didn't think anything of it. The next day, went back to school and she wasn't there. Oh well, maybe she wasn't feeling well. And after the weekend, went back to school again and she still wasn't there. Then I started to get really worried because she was my best friend in the whole world and we did everything together. So I called her home and her father answered the phone and I said, oh, is Cindy there? And he said, she can't come to the phone right now. She's not feeling well. And I said, oh, well, I hope she feels better soon. Um, tell her 
I'm sending her my love, and I look forward to seeing her in school again soon. And I didn't think of anything of it. And then I went back to school again the next day. She still wasn't there. I figured she was still sick. More days kept going like that, and she didn't come back. And I was getting more and more anxious. I knew something was wrong. And I didn't know what it was, and I thought, because it never crossed my mind, she would have disappeared, I thought maybe she got really sick. So I tried to call her father again, but nobody answered, and I really started to panic. After a couple of weeks of not being able to connect with her and not knowing what was happening, the principal of our school, who had seen how distraught I was, actually called me into his office. And he sat me down and said, look, Amanda, I can't tell you what happened, but Cindy will not be coming back to school anymore. And I was panicked. I said, is she okay? Did she get hurt? Is she still really sick? And he's like, no, no, she's fine, but she's not going to come back to school anymore. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't she come back to school anymore? And he could see my panic. We had a small school. He was a very loving, thoughtful soul. And so he gave me a little more information not enough to compromise her. And he told me that she'd gone with her mom to British Columbia, but that he couldn't tell me which school she was at, he couldn't give me an address or anything else, but just that she'd gone to visit some family and they were gonna stay out there for a while. And so she wouldn't be coming back to school. My heart broke. My best friend in the whole entire world was gone. Was gone with no preparation, no indication, nothing, no communication. It hit me so hard and it lasted for years and I never really knew if she was okay, if she was, if she was still alive. I had no way of connecting with her, no way of knowing and it broke my heart. It actually ended up taking me 23 years before I finally found her and thank goodness found out that she was okay. She had a hard time, but she was okay. So what I wanted to share with you about the want. So for those 23 years, I kept saying to myself, I want to see Cindy. I want to see Cindy. I want my best friend back. I want to know she's okay. And I kept pushing it out there. I want, I want, and my brain kept saying, you don't have, you don't have. Then I watched the movie, The Secret. And that's when I really started to learn about the law of attraction. And I started learning how the law of attraction works. And so we were living in New Zealand at the time, and my ex-husband and I, we were flying over to Canada with our kids, and we were coming home for my birthday. And my parents were going to have this big bonfire birthday. And I was really excited to see all my friends and family again. And while I was sitting on the plane, the movie kept going through my mind. The Secret. The movie The Secret it kept going through my mind. It's a documentary of the Law of Attraction. And I kept thinking about what I'd been learning over the years. And so I decided to take advantage of what I knew and intentionally focus my thoughts, train my subconscious mind to find her, to have her simply show up in my life as if it was already happening. It felt ridiculous. It felt like I was lying to myself, but I did it anyway. I thought it's not gonna do any harm, so I'm gonna give it a try. So I sat in my airplane seat. I decided to close my eyes and imagine my birthday party the big bonfire, my friends, my family, and I had this sudden vision just hit me really hard. Like I just, I let everything go and I imagined it completely. It was dark. The embers of the flames were clicking off in the distance and there was a car driving up the driveway and it was Cindy. And it was her family, and they were. And my parents have a really long driveway. And they're driving up the driveway, and I was just getting more and more excited. And I started walking down to meet them. There was a bend to meet them in the bend before they parked their car. And I felt it. I could. I could feel the dampness in the air. I could 
smell the smoke from the bonfire. I could hear the noises of my friends and family laughing in the background. And I imagined them pulling in. I could hear the gravel crunching underneath the tires as they slowed down to a stop. And I remember hearing the windows slide down and the face, Cindy's grown-up face, looking out at the car, looking at me, so excited, so happy. She opened the car door, got out of the car, stood up, and we gave each other the biggest hug in the entire world we've ever had. It was amazing. I could feel the sweater she was wearing. I could feel the thickness of the, the wool in her sweater. I could hear the rustling as the car doors opened and her husband came out and her son got out. I could feel all of these things. And I remember holding her hands and just looking at her and being like, oh my gosh, Cindy, I found you. I found you. And I could feel the tears running down my face. And it felt so real. And I was so happy. And then I just kept on running that scenario over and over in my mind for the whole, it was like a 12 hour flight. So for a very long time, the next day, uh, we had landed, we were at my parents' place, we were getting ourselves in, just settled in, we were getting excited for the bonfire party that was coming up that, in a couple of days of the weekend, and suddenly, I got this inspiration. Years before, I had joined Facebook, and I joined Facebook for the specific purpose of finding Cindy. When it started, I joined Facebook because it was the platform to find friends that you went to school with. And I wanted to find her, but I could never find her. There were a lot of Cindy's with the same last name as her in the whole world, and none of them were her. But after doing this mind work on the airplane on the way back to Canada to celebrate my birthday, I just suddenly got this inspiration, and it was, check Facebook again. And I thought, well, she won't be there, but okay. I check again and no, there was no Cindy with the same last name that was matched to her. I mean, I, honestly, there are like a hundred Cindy's with the same last name, but none of them were her. And then it was like another lightning bolt of inspiration. Look for her sister. And I'm like, but Diane is a familiar, like that won't be hard, easier, or that'll be an easy name and, and there'd be multiples of those. And then it was like, I heard this voice that said, no not Diane. And I'm like, okay, Marlene, Marlene. And I got so excited. And I just typed in Marlene and their last name. And one person came up. And I, I couldn't believe it. And so I decided to trust the feeling. And I wrote her a private message. And I said, hi, Marlene. I'm just wondering if you might be the Marlene who has a younger sister named Cindy. And then I hit send. The next day, I got a message back from Marlene. Hi, Amanda. Yes, this is the Marlene whose sister is Cindy, who went to school with you. <sighs> no way. 23 years. Wow. That moment completely set my trust in the law of attraction. And more specifically, in focusing your mind to filter what you want in a way that you already have it. Instead of 23 years of pushing it away, one day of focused attention believing it already happened. It gets better. It gets better. So anyway, she tells me, well, you couldn't find Cindy because she's not on Facebook. <laughs> Actually, she's rarely on the internet at all. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I would have never found her. I would have never found her if I had not had the inspiration to look for her sister. And she gave me her phone number. I called her. We had the most amazing conversation. We literally caught up years and years in about a three hour phone call. And I decided to just completely throw things out there. And I said, I have no idea where you live, but 
But if you happen to be in the area, I'm having a birthday party this weekend. And I would be so honored if you would come. And she said, oh, I don't have anything on this weekend. And we just live about an hour north of where we grew up. And I'm like, oh my god. Oh my goodness. No way. <laughs> so it happened exactly like I imagined it. It was dark. It was damp. I could hear the flames flickering in the background. I heard the crunching of the wheels coming up the driveway. I walked down, and as she came in the turn, she rolled down her window and smiled at me, opened the door, got out, and we just hugged. And I held her hands, and it was the most amazing experience. This is what I want for you, and this is what we're going to be learning today. So what did we learn from this? You have to set your intentions as if they have already happened. You have to use present tense, but you also have to use positive words. See, our brains are very interesting how they work. And again, they will filter things out based on the words they hear and the blocks that are already embedded in us. So, if you want to lose weight, for example, when you say things like, I have a goal. I want to lose 20 pounds. Guess what happens? First of all, I want, therefore it's not here right now. I'm not going to look for it. But secondly, I want to lose 20 pounds. Do you know what your brain does? Your brain says, lose? No, 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 no. I don't want to lose. I want to have. So I better make sure I have 20 pounds, <laughs> which is like, the whole reason the weight loss industry doesn't work because they focus on losing weight rather than having a healthy body. The same thing is if one of your goals for 2020 is to stop smoking. I want to stop smoking. Again, what are we doing? First of all, want, it's over there, <laughs> not over here. Second of all, we're, stay, we're saying stop, so we want to continue, and we're saying smoking so our brains are focused on smoking. So instead, I am so happy and grateful now that my lungs breathe in fresh, clean, healthy air all the time, no matter what. So you're looking at the end result that you want. So not what you don't want. You, it's like you don't want the pounds. You don't focus on that. You don't want to be smoking. You don't focus on that. You focus on the lean, trim, strong, healthy body. You focus on the lungs that can breathe. All right, so now I've already mentioned something that I didn't actually tell you about, but you've heard me say it a few times now. I am so happy and grateful now that that's how I want you to formulate all of your goals. You choose your goal and then you write down I am so happy, so grateful now that I have, I am, I am doing whatever that is in the present positive tense. Positive words only, present tense only. The happy and the grateful is so that you inspire those feelings inside of you. What we're going to do right now, I'm going to share with you a couple of tools that I use to help me stay on top of my dreams and make sure that my goals, my dreams become goals that become reality, all right? So some of the tools that I use are affirmations, gratitude journals, vision boards, mind movies, hypnosis, clearing sessions, and guided meditations. And I'll go through each of them very briefly for you. And then I've got a link in the description below where you can actually download my Law of Attraction PDF where I will explain each of the tools that I use to make sure that my goals actually come true and where you can access them. And a lot of them are free and I'm really excited to share them with you. Next week I'll be doing a video especially for you on how to create a vision board. So make sure that you are subscribed and that you've clicked that notification bell so that you'll get the notification as soon as that video comes out. All right, so let's start with affirmations. Affirmations are positive present tense words that we surround ourselves with. Like, I am wealthy. I am affirmations are the most powerful. It triggers an emotion in you as well that really helps to fine tune the focusing 
of that third eye, all right? So affirmations. All right, I want to just really quickly give you law of attraction definition. I know law of attraction gets thrown out everywhere and, and people can kind of get this impression that it's some woo-woo thing. You know, ooh, it's a magical thing. It's not. It's actually just energy that we send out is energy that comes back. Thoughts that we project out helps filter us so that we get it back. You see, how it works is everything around us already exists. The good, and the bad, the ugly, the great, everything already exists. But by focusing our energy, our thoughts, our intentions, and our actions into what it is that we actually desire in a way that is actually already here, then we have that filter system in place that then only pays attention to the things we want. And that's how it works. So the negative is already around you. The positive is already around you. And we want to use what is called the law of attraction to focus our energy to send out thoughts, actions, feelings that match what it is we wish to receive. So I've already mentioned how we use the law of attraction through affirmations. Meditation is a huge one. Meditation helps you to be in the present moment, which helps you to be aware of your senses. And if we're going to use our senses to achieve the things we want to achieve, then the best way to do that is to be in a state of calm and be aware of our feelings and therefore then have the ability to generate those feelings and excite them up and get them working for us. So I have these two books and they are my gratitude journals. And so I have a stack of them. Now I'm not always consistent. There have been years where I didn't write it in it at all and other years when I was very consistent I wrote it every time. Guess which years were most beneficial to me? <laughs> You guessed it. The years when I was consistently writing out my gratitude were the years when I achieved my goals. Were the years when Disney Radio called me to interview me. It was the year when Costco Magazine called me to do an interview with me for their Canadian magazine and then again for their American magazine. You know, so it was the years when I achieved success were the years when I was writing out my goals. And I would write down five things in my journal every day and so I would write things that I was grateful for that actually existed in my day. And some days it's hard. Some days it's as simple as I am grateful I had a cup of coffee this morning. But some days it's really easy and you're like, oh my gosh, I am so grateful for my wife who came home and made me dinner. I'm so grateful for that, that sale that came in today. I'm so grateful that my children got home safe and sound. There are so many things to be grateful for. And then I'd throw in a couple of things that I was grateful for that hadn't happened yet because I know the power of the law of attraction and sending that emotion. If you write down what you're grateful for, what you're going to have at nighttime before you go to sleep, then you're going to be programming your mind to actually dream about ways to achieve what you want to achieve. First thing in the morning, set your day. Last thing at night before going to bed. What a great way to separate it. So now I have my gratitude journal today that I write first thing in the morning, what I'm grateful for, for what I have right now, sets my day, and my gratitude journal tonight, which is my future dream goal um, gratitude journal, but written as if it already happened. All right, so now let's talk about a vision board. Again, I mentioned it earlier very briefly. We want to create a board, and we're going to do it next week, so make sure that you have subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you'll know as soon as it comes out. I'm going to walk you through how to actually create a vision board. So what is a vision board? So it's literally a board, or it can be a wall, or it can be a fridge. It's just a place where you pop pictures of the things that you wish to achieve. And there are special tricks that I'm going to share with you. I'm so excited to share with you next week of how to make sure that your brain accepts those images as if it's already happened. And then the week after that, I'm going to teach you how to turn your vision board into a movie so that you actually feel like you're stepping right into your dream world. Plus, again, some special mind tricks of how to make sure you're, you're hitting all of the pieces that are really important to hit. Okay, so besides affirmations, gratitude journal, um, vision boards, and, and mind movies or digital vision boards, what else? I mentioned meditation to get grounded, 
and I, met, I mentioned clearing blocks. So I don't want to spend too much time right now explaining all of this. Just download the free Law of Attraction PDF that I've got in the link below for you. And I've got a couple of places that I personally use where you can get some free guided meditations and free guided hypnosis sessions and clearing sessions that will help remove, first of all, figure out what your blocks are and remove them and start training your subconscious mind for success. And the other thing that you can do and that I like to do for myself and especially for my family to make sure that they're on board with the same positive mindset is to watch movies that teach the law of attraction either through documentary style or through action through actually having the characters do what it is that they're learning and so i've put a couple of the movies that i love in the description below one is the secret because that's the one that helped me find my best friend oh my gosh i am so excited for you are you excited if you're excited to achieve your goals this year give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below what is the biggest goal that you intend to achieve this year? All right, and now the next homework is, first of all, download the PDF, make sure you've got that, and then check out the playlist over here to make sure you're on top of every step of the goal setting challenge. And in there, I've got a pre-made mind movie. Actually, I've got two pre-made mind movies in there just to help you already get on track and thinking abundantly. Okay, I'll see you right over here.